What's up, my ninjas? I'm Strident, and I'm back with a different kind of video. I was going to cover the whole Batman from uh, the new Batman suit from the uh, Zack Snyder train wreck that's about to happen. Uh, it looks good. I'm going to get into more of that later on. We're in the middle of, or the tail end actually, of a tornado advisory over here, and the weather's pretty shitty, so I didn't want to even jump online. I figured I would just sit and do something that I had planned on doing for a long time. ODC That's Me did his. Uh, I'll probably link to it. But here are my top 10 DC Animated Universe films. Number 10. Na, 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 na. So number 10 for me is Mask of the Phantasm. It's kind of the movie that somewhat started all of this. I mean, not really, because it's, it's strictly Batman. And at the time, we only were getting Batman films, but it is the movie that kind of started giving us and giving the world uh, 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 kind of a crash course in the DC universe, even if it had to start with Batman. And uh, it was pretty good. I mean, by today's standards, it's an okay movie. Uh, it was great when it came out. And it's not horrible. It's got an awesome soundtrack, too. Probably one of the best out there. But, uh, yeah, I like it. I like it. I watch it from time to time. Number nine, Superman Doomsday. This was really the animated uh, DC Animated Universe film that kicked it off properly. Um, granted, there are aspects of the film that don't necessarily feel as uh, polished. You know, I, like I said in my review, the music was meh. Um, is probably the worst part about it. Some of the characterizations were a little kind of, I don't want to say they were rushed, but some of the characterizations were really trimmed. But you got a really creepy Lex Luthor, which you need, and you got a really valiant Superman. And they did some cool things to actually pay homage to the whole reign of Superman thing without disrespecting the reign of the Superman. This actually felt plausible, you know? the whole angle on cloning Superman and all that stuff, and it, it, it easily could fit into that framework, and I loved it, and the fights in this are fucking amazing. Doomsday, um, Superman, Evil Superman, it's just, it's a quality film. Number eight, Wonder Woman. This is a very underrated gem of a animated film. From the opening scene where you see Hippolyta fighting, uh, what's his name, Thrax, and, uh, you know, the various minions of the underworld. It's just so raw. And it's not what you, you know, I know this is what Wonder Woman should be like. Most of us fans know this is what Wonder Woman should be like. But the general public at large has no idea. They just think it's the fucking Linda Carter stuff. This movie actually shows you the attitude, the feel, the power. They show you what she is. And, and I think this is what they need to go with as kind of a framework for future versions of Wonder Woman on film. But if you haven't seen it, see it. It's quality. Quality. Number seven. Superman, Batman, Apocalypse. This is the movie that made me start doing DC, uh, or do, not just DC, but reviews in general for everything. Um, this movie, it was one of those flicks where at first I was kind of like, eh, you know what I mean? I didn't expect it to be amazing. And then I watched it and I was like, holy shit. And it's mainly, there's a fight Wonder Woman has with the Furies. Her and uh, Big Barda. Fucking amazing animation. Uh, props to Lauren Mont Montgomery. She really did the damn thing with her team in this one. Um, and then the end of the movie. It, it, you don't see it coming and then it hits you and you're like, holy crap. You have to see this movie. It's quality. It's not, and, and despite the whole Andre Brower being dark side and not uh, Michael Ironsides, it's still awesome. You know, these are kind of like Elseworld stories when you see them in this kind of format. So you just take it as it is and just listen to what he has to say. And it actually works. You know what I mean? It actually does work. He sounds more intelligent and less just scary. I mean, when you look at the guy, he is scary. So... His voice doesn't necessarily have to be 100% like that. But anyway, all that criticism aside, it's a great, great... Number six! Green Lantern, Emerald Knights, and Justice League, The New Frontier. They're kind of tied. Um, Emerald Knights 
is the best Green Lantern thing they've released. I mean, I like First Flight. It's cool and all, but Emerald Knights is more awesome to me because as a person who's not really a fan of the Green Lanterns, seeing a whole bunch of them and seeing their, their various stories and struggles, it worked for me. And uh, Kilowog is my favorite Green Lantern, so it was awesome to see him front and center and see how he became the badass that he is. Um, JL uh, Justice League The New Frontier it was awesome because it was uh, one of those stories that's not it doesn't feel like a traditional uh, a stereotypical comic book and the way it's presented it makes the heroes seem bigger than what we know of them you know and it actually solidifies them as a part of American history and I like that you know what I mean um, it's, it's just a well written story and they did it justice in animated form. So I couldn't decide between the two, so they both serve as my number six. Now we're going to get into the top five. These are my absolute favorites of all of these movies. <laughs> number five. Under the Red Hood. Plain and simple. <laughs> this movie is fucking phenomenal. Um, it's easily the best Batman that we've ever seen on film so far. Plain and simple. Well, it's one of them because I actually have a Batman later on, but it's the the best modern take on Batman we've seen on film so far. Better than the, the Burton films, better than the Nolan films, better than the original animated series. It's just quality. He's so good at what he does, and it's strange because he's not even voiced by Kevin Conroy. Bruce Greenwood did a good job. Um, uh, who else was in this? Um, freaking Doogie Howser. God, Neil Patrick Harris. He was Nightwing, and it worked. Freaking uh, Jensen Ackles, he was uh, Jason Todd. It worked. He was a little overly dramatic, but it kind of worked because, you know, Jason Todd is a little bit overly dramatic. At least he was, you know. This is all pre-New 52. So, yeah, this is one of those must-buys if you are a fan of Batman and uh, animated films, especially the animated DC films. Number four, Superman versus the Elite. This is one of those movies who I think is horribly underrated, and it actually is, it's got some of the best animation of all of these flicks, and it's, uh, the story is just so important. <laughs> people don't, it, it speaks volumes, because when you look at how people look at superheroes today, they always hate the Goody Two-Shoes character that's trying to stand for something, and they always love the asshole who's trying to tear everything down. You know what I'm saying? And they pit Superman up against a team that is the embodiment of this. And granted, the story was written as kind of a rebuttal to the Wildstorm heroes that were imitating the DC ones, but with the more violent you know, outlook on things, like the authority and whatnot. I like the authority, but you can clearly see that they're imitating something. And the originals have a place. There's something that makes them icons and they should be respected. And you should never do things with them for the sake of fan service. Which is why I'm not a big fan of the New 52. But this solidifies why Superman is important. And why you need Superman. And why uh, you know these movies shouldn't be taken as pure cartoons. It has a kind of a Studio Ghibli kind of feel to it. But to me, it works because it resembles the old school Fleischer uh, films. So if you haven't seen it, see it. I think you will enjoy it. I enjoyed the shit out of this movie because it was a pleasant surprise. Number three. The Dark Knight Returns 1 and 2. I mean, come on, guys. I'm a Batman fan. I'm a little tired of him these days. But this was one of those ones that... It totally showed people why... It shows the world why people are Batman fans. Granted, there's a few things I would have changed because it was in the future and he was still using kind of generic-looking military stuff. I would have actually, since he had his own Batmobile, redesigned the helicopter to be, you know, a Batcopter instead of just a military helicopter. But anyway, all those little things aside, the fights, the uh, uh, freaking having Robocop as the voice of... The original Robocop, Peter Weller, is the voice of old Batman. It just worked so well. And this is the most brutal, one of the most brutal Batman films we've had so far. Everything was imagined perfectly. I mean, at one point in time, they said this story was unfilmable. And look, Jay Oliva and his team, they did the damn thing. This is an example of why 
Warner Brothers is failing with their live action stuff and why we need to have the guys that are directing these animated films, at least these older ones, they need to be directing the live action films, you know? Put them alongside Zack Snyder and you have a win. Get Nolan out of there. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, this movie's amazing. Check it out. Number two. Now, if you know me, chances are you already know what my top two will be. <laughs> but I'll just tell you, my number two, Batman Beyond Return of the Joker. This was almost my number one, but they actually released something that eclipses this movie by so much. I'm kind of annoyed that, you know, of my top five, four of them are Batman films. I'm sorry, three of them. Wow. Something's wrong with me. Sorry. Three of them are Batman films. Um... But I'm a Batman fan, and unfortunately, the way that our uh, Warner Brothers has been working, they put their most, their, their biggest talent on their Batman stuff. So we always get the best Batman products. Um, Return of the Joker hit me on multiple levels because it ties up the loose ends from the animated series. It ties up the loose ends. Well, not necessarily tying up, but it answers questions that Batman Beyond did not answer at the time because I always thought that the origin for the whole Batman Beyond and, and uh, Bruce giving up being Batman was bullshit. Like, he wouldn't pull a gun on someone when the suit generates freaking batarangs or could just shoot them out of the wrists. He wouldn't need to reach for the gun. And I understand it was a moment of desperation, but it just seemed horribly out of character. To actually see that the Joker kind of won in this moment, he got Tim to totally hate being a superhero and he took the fun out of it and made him look like the Joker and just screwed with him and tortured him and Tim is my favorite Batman so I mean favorite uh, Robin so that hit me I was like holy shit they really they jacked him up oh my god and I saw the uncut version first because it was leaked and I had friends at school and you know I was in art school and I was in animation so you know people were like waiting for this and when it came out everybody had these bootlegs and I was just amazed completely amazed there was a genuine sense of uh, the world that's been built over all the years that the animated series lasted and the the years that Batman Beyond was going on and you got the creepiness of the, the you know condemned Arkham Asylum you got the like hugeness of the future Gotham and uh, the fight scenes were well choreographed especially in the uncut version Batman was beating the shit out of everybody I mean it was just and sometimes they were beating the shit out of him you know so it's I don't know it's his quality and this actually made me a fan of Terry McGinnis I didn't like him before because he I kept calling him uh, Spider-Man 2099 you know what I mean because he just felt like Spider-Man with Batman stuff on because he was younger, he had the attitude, he's, you know, popping jokes and talking too much, and he's skinny, and he would always, like, curl up in these agile poses and stuff, and I was just like, man, this is Batman, I mean, essentially it's Batman 2099, I don't like it, but then after this movie, I was like, wow, I see where they're going with this, and I dig it, so, Return Batman Beyond Return of the Joker is a win, that's my number two, and I'm not even going to do a recap. <laughs> my number one you guys know I, I, I've i raved about this one it's the one that blew me away it's the one forever that any time they make a Justice League film I am going to compare it to this and it's the Flashpoint Paradox this movie kicks the shit out of everything else everything else the plot the fact that it's a Flash centric story and it's an animation um, the designs of the characters the fact that this was the most it was, a, it was the perfect blend of anime slash, uh, you know, Western comic book sensibilities. Um, the fact that you had villains that were actually kind of winning. And the plot, the, the, I, I got to go back to the plot. The fact that you're seeing the DC Universe flipped on its head and characters are acting out of character. <laughs> it's, you know, kind of, situationally. Uh, but... When they, you know, when you see them doing what they do, like the sequence with uh, Deathstroke and Lex and his people on the Ravager fighting a bunch of Atlanteans, it was amazing. And it was only a couple minutes, but it was freaking amazing to see all those Atlanteans who normally are kind of in different areas of the DC Universe. You're seeing them all working together. 
it was freaking just amazing. Watching uh, Thomas Wayne as Batman fight Yo-Yo, and she's doing all that crazy Chinese kung fu stuff with the her Yo-Yos that you normally see them do with the nine whip. It was like, what the fuck? Where did this come from? Because she was actually, I think, she no, she actually was in the comic. Um, it just was crazy, man. And the little changes they did, because in the comic he kills Yo-Yo. In the the movie, Cyborg saves her. So, you know, just little things, you know. I had no issues with the changes, and it had the smoothest, I said this in my, my review, and I gotta say it again, the smoothest slow-mo I have ever seen multiple times when you see the Flash flying all, running all over the place, jumping and dodging bullets, just, just barely dodging bullets in some cases. Um, I don't know, it was awesome. It has one criticism, and it's the voice actor for The Flash. He was so flat, it was just like, eh, why not get Michael Rosenbaum to be The Flash again and have this, instead of it being Barry, have it be Wally, and then when it switches over to the new 52, it's no longer <laughs> Wally, it's Barry. You know, let that be the change. I don't know, but that's my one criticism. At times, he was so flat, and The Flash is a character with so much personality. I mean, he's almost like Spider-Man in the DC universe, so I expected a little bit more from him. But, with that being said, it's easily the best of the DC animated films. Um, my honorable mentions would go to The Spectre. I've never seen that in an American animated film. It was just creepy, but it was really well directed and it had the whole genre, the, the grindhouse genre in 2D. Like, when do they do that? I wish they would do more of that. You know, that's what I was expecting from everything that came after Flashpoint. I'm like, oh, they're gonna, you know, add the, the style to all this shit because the books themselves don't really have as much identity as they hope to have or as much as they kind of throw at us or they think they're throwing at us, you know? Um, so, uh, The Spectre, um, Crisis on Two Earths, that's a really good one. It's just that some of the voice cast just was like, eh. Um, and what was another one? Green Arrow. I love the, the DC Showcase Green Arrow. That one is awesome. If it was a whole entire film, not just a short, it would have been up in my top five. Because Green Lantern, or Green Lantern, Green Arrow is my second favorite DC character of all time. Um, you know, away from Batman and Superman, because they're just great, period. But Green Arrow, I love... And not the shit that's on TV. Um, it, that's kind of good and kind of bad. You know what I mean? I'm talking the real Oliver Queen. The one that is lighthearted and, you know, he's the underdog no matter what the situation is. You know what I mean? That guy. I dig that version. So that one was fun. And uh, uh, I feel like I'm forgetting one. Oh, World's Finest. That Superman Batman film. That was the kind of the start of the Superman Batman adventures. Um, that was really good because we had never seen it animated before. I mean, don't count the Super Friends. I mean, serious and animated. The only reason why I didn't put this up here is because one, they completely shat on Superman, and it was technically an episode of his own show. Uh, number two, it was I don't know. They shat on Superman in his own show. <laughs> I hate that. I hate that with a passion. It's his show. Let him shine and have Batman shine alongside him. Don't just be like, I'm Bruce Timm and I love Batman. So fuck Superman. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's not fair. And But even with that, it was still cool. Still well done. Really good animation. Um, and my final honorable mention would be Catwoman. Uh, the DC Showcase Catwoman. Um, you know what? No. Forget that. Not Catwoman. The uh, Return of Black Adam. That was awesome. I just thought about it. The Catwoman one wasn't really that amazing. <laughs> the Black Adam one was actually pretty nice. This was a nice origin story. The fight scenes were quality. And the fact that you were seeing him figure out everything. You're seeing Billy figure out everything as he learned it. You know what I'm saying? Like, as he was going along, he's figuring out, oh, crap, I'm fast. Oh, crap, I'm strong. You know what I mean? Like, he's figuring it all out as time goes along. And, you know, his life is in danger. And then finally, he's like, I have all this power. I can do what I need to do. And such a simple moral. You have Superman, like, just be good. Remember, be good. Very simple. You have all this power. Don't 
use it for evil, use it to help people, be good. It's such a simple moral, and I dug it. Um, so that's it, man. That's my, uh, my top 10. Um, give me your top 10s in the uh, comments below, and I will catch you on my next video. That rhymed. <laughs> Peace outside.